Ever since the 2016 Brexit referendum, there have been people trying to get around the decision. Whether that's trying to get the whole country around the vote through a second referendum, or trying to get themselves around it by changing their citizenship to another country. In fact, about a year ago, we headed out to Estonia to learn about their e-residency system and how Brits with Estonian e-residency could continue to run EU businesses even after Brexit. That video is linked down below if you're interested. The programme we're going to take a look at today is a lot simpler. EU passports. Give me just 20 seconds to promote two things. On our new EU channel, we have a video out which explains the basics of the EU. So if you want to learn more, click the link down below. Also, if you want to escape Brexit in a smaller way than a foreign passport, then our UK and EU pin badges are now back on the store for pre-order. There's a strictly limited quantity, so click the link below. If you're a Brit hoping to retain your rights as an EU citizen post-Brexit, getting citizenship to another EU country might seem like an obvious fix. It certainly seems like a lot of people thought it was the easy solution, with approaching a million people applying for an Irish passport in 2019 alone. Ireland have been a popular choice with Brits, unsurprising really considering the proximity, common language and relationship between the countries. But other countries could also be potential targets for Brits wanting to remain within the EU. And we'll run through some of those later in this video, so stick around for that. The benefit of obtaining an EU passport is pretty clear. With the UK leaving the EU, citizens lose all of the benefits of EU membership, like the right to live and work in any EU country. Obviously, once the UK's left the EU, a British passport will no longer grant you those rights. So if they're important to you, becoming Irish or another EU citizen could help you get around this issue. As well as, maybe less importantly, helping you keep your data roaming and access to EU passport lines in airports. As I mentioned a moment ago, if you did apply for an Irish passport, you certainly wouldn't be the first. In 2019, almost a million Irish passports were issued, marking a record high for the nation. This is in large part because of Brits applying for Irish passports in order to retain their EU citizenship. The UK has a long history with Ireland, something too complex to go into in this video, but these links mean that a lot of people living across the United Kingdom have strong ties to the country. In fact, Irish heritage is the most common for UK citizens, something which could make getting their application approved significantly smoother. So, let's take a look at how the application works and if you could be eligible for Irish citizenship. The first and probably most obvious question is are you already Irish? You might have moved away years ago, your parents might not even be Irish, but if you were born anywhere on the island of Ireland, you could already be Irish. That's right, anyone who was born in the Republic of Ireland or Northern Ireland before 2005 has birthright citizenship. As I've alluded to, birthright citizenship was abolished via a 2005 referendum, so you have to be born before that date. If you were born on the island of Ireland after 2005, you need to be able to show that your parents lived in Ireland for three of the four years before you were born. If either condition applies to you and you meet the conditions for being born on the island of Ireland, then I have good news for you. You already have the right to Irish citizenship. So let's assume that's not you. You weren't born in Ireland, and you've possibly never even visited. Could you still have a shot at nabbing one of those sought-after passports? Well, the next question is, are either of your parents Irish? If your parents are an Irish citizen, then again, you've got right to Irish citizenship too. There's technically a caveat that the Irish parent needs to have been born in Ireland before 2005. But without going into the maths and the analytics of our audience too much, it's unlikely that anyone watching this video has a parent who was born after 2005. The right continues to those who have Irish grandparents too, but it's not quite as simple for them. Also, if you have an Irish great-grandparent, you could also be eligible. But one of your parents would need to have taken up Irish citizenship before you were born. If your parents didn't become Irish, then unfortunately this great-grandparent link is no longer open to you. If you do have this link, you'll need to apply to be on the foreign births register. But honestly, this video is so deep into the weeds already, you can just Google that yourself if you want more information. We really can't spend any more time on admin. So you might be feeling a little disheartened so far. You don't have any Irish family members, and you've spent the last three minutes listening to some bloke talk about forms and technicalities of family lineage. However, all hope is not lost. You could instead try for a non-hereditary application. You could become an Irish citizen if you either marry or enter into a civil partnership with an, with an Irish citizen, but you do also need to meet a list of criteria first. 
Your other option is if you've been living in Ireland for a while now, you could become a citizen through naturalization. There are even more detailed hoops to jump through for this one, but essentially, you need to have been a resident in Ireland for at least five years out of the last nine. When it comes to actually applying for the passport itself, you can't do it online, so you'll need to head to either the Irish Passport Office in London or to one of the many organisations across the country who can supply you with application forms. Once you've filled out the forms and you've got all your paperwork sorted, you'll want to submit your application. You can do this via an appointment in London, Liverpool or Glasgow, or you can post it straight to Cork. The application costs 80 euros, but you can pay a little extra if you want to expedite your application. And as I'll explain in a moment, you might want to. There will also likely be some other costs to account for. This will cover things like paying for additional copies of relevant certificates, which could push the total cost towards around £500. As I said a moment ago, you might want to fork out for the expedited service, because for many people, the application process hasn't been quick. Even once you've decoded your family tree, got your hands on the paperwork, visited a post office in Glasgow and paid your 80 euros, the process isn't necessarily complete and depending on the type of application, there's no guarantee that you'll be accepted. You might be willing to wait for the application process to take place, but if you don't have any family in Ireland and five years feels like too long a wait for you, there are some other options. So let's run through some of the other viable routes to an EU passport. Spain might seem like a good option, but if it's ease of entry you're looking for, then it could actually be harder. Although about 300,000 UK citizens live in Spain, only a small subset are actually citizens. That's because you have to live in the country for 10 consecutive years until you're able to naturalise. Citizens also can't hold dual nationality, meaning they'd have to renounce their British citizenship to become fully Spanish. In addition to this, you'd also have to pass a Spanish culture test and language test, so fingers crossed you are paying attention in school. France is another popular option, with around 160,000 Brits already living there, making it the third most common EU country for British expats. If you wanted to not only live there but become a citizen, you wouldn't be alone, as the number of applicants is said to have increased by about 750% since the EU referendum. To automatically qualify, you'll need a French parent or grandparent, but you can also naturalise after five years, four years if you marry a French citizen, or two years if you complete a postgrad course in the country. Like Spain, to naturalise, you'll also need to pass a French language and culture interview. Portugal have said they want to make the process as easy as possible for British citizens, regardless of the deal or lack of deal we end up with. They allow dual nationality and allow you to obtain citizenship if you have a Portuguese parent or grandparent. They also allow naturalisation, with the requirements stating that you have to live in the country for six years before applying. You'll also need to pass a language test. With all these tests, who said that the language classes you took in school were useless? Germany could be another option, granting citizenship to people with German heritage. Alternatively, if you were born in Germany since 2000, you can automatically receive German citizenship, regardless of your parents' nationality. If you don't have German parents and weren't born in Germany, you could still naturalise, though the process will take eight years, unless your German skills are particularly strong or you work at a charity in Germany in which case your time would be reduced. Unfortunately, I didn't listen to Mr. Cooper enough in school, so the strong German route certainly isn't open to me at this point. One final option I'd like to float is Poland. I've never visited the country, and although my friends tell me it's lovely, that's not the reason I'm making this recommendation. Instead, it's because The Guardian reported that Poland only received two applications from Brits in the first half of 2019, so it sounds like their passport office might not be all that busy. I'd love to know what you think about this whole concept though. Are you a Brit who's considering changing nationality after Brexit? And if so, which benefits of EU membership are you hoping to retain? Are you an EU citizen who's interested in Brits moving to your country? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned our EU and UK badges, but we have a whole collection of badges available online. So if you want to check them out, click the link below. Also, if you spend more than £20 and use the code free shipping, you will, unsurprisingly, get free shipping on your order. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to get more updates and videos from us. And if you want a notification every time we release a video, be sure to hit the bell icon. You can also find us across all social networks simply by searching for TLDR News.